<laughs> All right, I hesitate to ask, but are there any questions? Um, I have a question. <laughs> yes. They're all stupid. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, <laughs> oh, I am joking. Unless you didn't put any effort into it. <laughs> okay. So, in here. Where's here? Um, page 636. The very bottom paragraph. It's talking 636. about how uh, the VGS determines the current. Yep. For the uh, for the test for the test. Yep. For the bottom two ten and six, which is both two ten and six. Yep. Then it's talking about how um the VS uh, affects the masses. So yeah. So if you look. So I don't understand how one of them can determine the current and the other one. Because so right when you. Look at this curve, which is the basic current mirror, right? And you say, okay, well, this is basically the current right here, but there's still a change. You change the VDS, and it still roughly changes the current, right? And the only way to get a very fixed current is to hold the VDS constant. So what we do at the cascode is we bias up on this curve with this device here. Okay? Then, with this device and this vol extra voltage, we pin that voltage fixed. So now we're holding, effectively, the drain-to-source voltage constant. So we're sitting right here at a fixed drain-to-source voltage. And we're staying on this VGS curve. So to get very precise current matching, we need to hold the VGS constant and the VDS constant. So if I look... Just the VGS alone gets the current to an approximate value, so it sets the current. But then if I want it to say precise and match the other current right here, i got to try to pin the VDS to a precise value. Okay, so to determine what we want the current to be by setting VDS. Yeah, and then to make sure that the variation is small, we try to hold the VDS constant. But of course, for a current source, we want to be able to vary the voltage across the current source or current sink. And so we can't just fix the voltage with an external source because then it doesn't serve our purposes as a current source. We want to be able to change the voltage across the current source. We want to be able to change the voltage across the current source, but this pesky R out causes an extra current to flow as so we change this. It's not just ID set. So here, if we have this voltage, we have this current. As we change V out, we get this curve. Remember at the beginning of chapter 9? That's what model's at. So for the cascode, how would we change this model? <coughs> that becomes R out cascode. Gee, you're not challenging me. And R out cascode's much bigger for the cascode, so we get much less variation. What did I say was going to be on the quiz today? What? Of course, that's what I said. Did anybody listen to me? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not used to a professor telling me something and then actually meaning it. <laughs> any other questions on any of the homework? The homework that's due on uh, Tuesday. Oh, yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So on uh, the, a couple of the things were <coughs> saying to do, like, some of the diagrams as PMOS instead of MOS. Yep. Whatever. But some of them are like half PMOS and half in MOS. So Give me an example. Give me an example. Um, well, uh, look, at one of them. look at one of them. The question. <laughs> I mean, the homework slide. Because it has like 21, 22, 23, 24. Twenty twenty nine. Oh, right here. PMOS equivalent of twenty twenty nine, twenty thirty three. Okay, this better be a challenging question. 
2029. What? Come on. I'll do this first one for you. Okay? You ready? Oh, yeah, I'm just kidding. So, you just change. So, like, if you look at, if you look at 2033, you would just change those black, the M2 and M4 to two markers, right? I don't know. Or do you have to change all of, all of them to two markers? Because you have, like, several, a couple two markers. In How about I do 29, and then you tell me if it makes sense? That one's too easy. <laughs> yeah, they're all easy. All the questions I ever ask are easy. That's why there's tears on your homework as I'm grading them. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Do I say what the hell too often? <laughs> Only like a couple times a video. Yeah, that's my favorite <laughs> saying. All right, let's talk about amplifiers now because you're all biasing gurus. So I'm going to do an example that you already know, and you're going to tell me what the answer is. And actually, I'm going to do a spice sim too. Sound good? So I want you to tell me. First off, if I have 1.1 volt DC and I have an AC signal, say 10 millivolts, and say that AC signal is at 1 kilohertz, whatever, can I write the total voltage is 1.15 plus 10 millivolts? Can I add a DC component with an AC component? Well, let's do this a little bit simpler. Can I take an AC component at 10 millivolts, sine 2 pi times 1 kT, and add it to a, another 10 millivolts at sine of 2 pi, 1K, or 2 kT, and say, hey, the result is 20 millivolts? Does that make sense? It's ridiculous. You can't take a DC and an AC and add them together and say that that's 1.15 or 1.16 volts. You can't take two sinusoids at different frequencies, add them together, and say they're 20 millivolts. Does everybody see that? Isn't that what you end up basically doing whenever you have a DC No, you write 1.15 volts plus 10 millivolts sine 2 pi 1 kT. That's your signal. That you can add. You can't combine them to one number. Okay, so back on the farm. I'm going to put an AC source here of 1 millivolt, and then I'm going to put a DC voltage up to VDD. Yep. Of 1.15. I'll be curious in two years when I'm teaching this class after I've done the circuit sequence to see what the difference is. Okay, so what's this voltage? How about DC? 3.85. Anybody not follow that? All right, so if I write the AC voltage, I put the polarity like this. What is the AC voltage here? If I do this... And I ask, what's the voltage there? What's the answer? So I got a power supply. And on the front of the power supply is a red, a black, and a green. And I want minus 5 volts. What do I do? Ground the red. Connect, set the power supply to 5 volts. The meter will say 5 volts. And then that will be my minus 5. Does everybody follow that it's okay to ground the positive terminal? It's not okay to ground both sides. 
because that's putting a wire across. Give me an example in daily life where you will have a negative potential like this in cars. So in your car, basic most cars, they have a battery, which open circuit voltage is like 13.5 volts. And when you load it, it drops a little bit, and then they ground the minus terminal. That's why when you jump start a car, you always connect a positive terminal first. So when you connect the minus terminal, the electrons have a place to go, right? The ground is connected to the chassis. But in diesels, they ground the positive terminal, and they use the minus terminal to power for diesel. I forget. There's some reason. I don't remember everything. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's, it seems cool. Will it work if you flip it the other way? Yes. <coughs> Which car doesn't use spark plugs? Yeah. All right. Just check in. Yeah, they use compression. What's Hemi mean? You know, a Hemi, like in a diesel, what does Hemi mean? Yeah, it means the piston has a hemisphere on the top, and then when it goes up, there's a hemispherical, so you get more pressure. I'm just full of information, and I know that at some point I knew it really well, and I can't remember right now. There's some reason for it with regard to how they connect the system up. I think it has to do with the chassis or something and the glowing to connect the voltage, because the whole chassis being at ground has some de detrimental effect versus being at uh, positive and then driving the uh, cylinders negative. Anyway, um, all right, so back on the farm. Let's solve this problem, and this is from table 9.1. So here's what you don't do during the, uh, um, during the uh, test when it says solve for the currents. Use, notice the sizes and biasing are from table 9.1. Don't go like this. ID, let me look at the back of the book. ID is 20 microamps. That's an answer. No, reading a value out of the table and putting a box around it is not an answer. It means you're not following what's going on. And when I graded the homework, I'm like, what the hell? They're putting all the values from table 9.1 in here and thinking it's an answer. So what's the only unknown you don't know here? You put this voltage is 3.85, but what is the current? What is VSG, the AC? What's the source voltage for AC? And this is minus 1 millivolt, just as I said. So V source minus V gate equals 0 minus, minus 1 millivolt, which equals 1 millivolt. Hey, he's not challenging me. He has a voltage, AC, between here and here, which is plus minus VSG, which is 1 millivolt. Questions? So what is ID then, the AC? GM's from the table, 150. Which way does the current flow? Current flows down. Water flows down. Source to drain for PMOS. Complement for NMOS, it's drain to source. They should call it complementary metal ox. Oh, wait, they did. <laughs> source is on the top for the PMOS. Source is on the bottom. Current flows from source to drain for the PMOS. Drain to source for the NMOS. We ready to do this problem? You know what? I'm a I mean, spice it. I almost made the same mistake again. Can't count. Um, any questions before I do this one? Oh, so you know what? Let's do. Let's cheat and copy over into the. Uh, that was figure, um, what was that? What was the beta multiplier? Oh, I think I did that in chapter 21. 
what was the uh, let's just pick this yeah 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 nope don't want that one oh yeah there we go all right so I'm gonna copy these control C I'm gonna come over here to our folder do a control V then let's go here example one let's go uh, file save as I'm gonna do this one more time too because I'm like when you're doing AC and you put in a dot OP what's dot OP it's an operating point all the AC sources, the AC voltages are shorted out, the AC currents are opened. So you can't do a dot OP and do AC, it says, I don't know what I'm doing, okay? So let's do it one more time. So let's go ahead and get the scissors out here and then cut. And then you know what let's do? Let's be fancy. Let's move this, put it here, then I'm going to right click on that and go port type, output. Boom! Looks nice, huh? Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go, let's look in the current directory and pull up figure 22 and plop it down. Then I'm going to press G. There's my beta multiplier. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a VDD here. And then right click here. Yay. Then I'm going to go one more time and put a. Uh, go back and put a transistor in. And then you know what I'm going to do? We're not going to use this right now. Oops. But I'm going to put it here just to make it easier on myself in the future. V bias P. Then right click on this and length this 2 microns. Width is 30 microns. Model name is what? Okay, any questions? Of course, they won't show up. So I'll right click on this, double click and control right click and put that in. Then I'm going to hit copy. And then let's get the old pen out here. And then let's put another ground. Is this device in saturation? Why? That's correct, because the source to drain voltage is 5 volts. And whenever I look at something being in saturation, I say, is VGS or VSG greater than the threshold voltage? And is the source to drain voltage greater than VGS or VSG minus the threshold voltage? I just keep repeating it over and over and over and over. No different. Every time you ask me that, it's the same thing. No difference. Okay, it's like I'm living Groundhog Day here, man. It's killing me. <laughs> okay. Didn't you think that was funny when he let the groundhog drive the truck? <laughs> I did. That movie, my wife hated it too. This movie's crap. Why do you like this? And I'm like, this movie's great. <laughs> uh, I think that's one of those movies you either hate it or love it. <laughs> All right, did anybody have any questions on what I did? Because I'm going to do this several ways. One more time, because if I get more homework that's turned in that they say, hey, I'm doing an AC, look, my AC is correct, and I'm doing a dot OP, I'm going to be like, Ugh. okay. I'm going to do one more thing here. Control R, Control E, move the source. I don't know why it defaults to that, but whatever. 
hate hating on the Groundhog Day movie. That's not good, man. Most of you probably haven't even seen that movie. <laughs> now I'll go see it. It's probably on Netflix. Okay. We ready to go? So let's do a dot OP. What is that going to tell us? The DC operating point. Well, let's see. I said that uh, the DC operating point, this was 3.85 volts. Does everybody agree with that? I said the current was 20 microamps. Well, I've got a large VGS, so it says 21. Is that okay? Let's make device going in, 21. Device defines positive current flow as going into the transistor. Yay. So now that's what I can use the dot OP for. Do not use it for anything else. So now let's go file, save as, example two. And I say, okay, well now I'm going to do a dot AC. <coughs> Decade, 100. Start frequency, 10 hertz. Let's go 10 kilohertz, 100 points per decade. What does decade mean again? Multiply by 10 or divide by 10. So what's one decade above 1.2 hertz? 12 hertz. Okay, so I put that here. And these, AC is for doing small signal analysis. So if I put large signals in and I do it to AC, it won't tell me it doesn't work. Does everybody get this? Because I don't want you confusing the analysis anymore during the class. AC is small signal analysis. So we hit run, and what do I want to show? I want to show all those things he said. Or I don't believe him. Is that really zero volts? Minus 390 dB. I don't know what that means. I like linear. There we go. Is this voltage really minus one like he said? No, it's one millivolt. Oh, wait, with an AC analysis, I look at phase. What's the phase shift here? The dotted line, 180. Oh, so that is minus one. Okay, so, so far he hasn't lied to me. So now I'm going to, that I know of anyway. Now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put plot the current that flows. And I plotted a current 150 nanoamps. Oh, gee, okay, in zero degree phase. All right, so maybe this is good and he knows what he's doing. Any questions? Does everybody see how I did the problem and showed what the AC and the DC were? I didn't add them together. Now I'm going to do two more things. Any questions? Okay, we've done this before, but we're doing it again. So when I take massive points off, when you say here, dot OP shows the AC, lay it on me. I don't know, man. You did something wrong. <laughs> well, I don't know. Send me the schematic, and I'll look at it next time. Oh, did we want to meet this weekend since we have a test a week from today? No? What time works? Sunday, 6 a.m.? <laughs> We'll be done by 7, but it'll be recorded. What time works? What time would you get up if you took a nap? Why don't we do it at 3 in the afternoon? How's that work for everybody? Sunday. 3. You guys, I'm going to just come in and you're going to ask me questions. Doesn't work? Uh, how about... No, we can't. We need to be considerate for the professor's time. He's like <laughs> stretched really thin. Oh. But what about one? You wanted one before, right? Does one work for everybody? Charlie? Adam? 
Dane? Yeah. Aaron? One o'clock on Sunday. Uh, so we'll pick a room in the first floor of TBE. I gotta make sure I put it on my calendar. <laughs> If you can't make it, I'll record it. Okay. And what I want you to do, I'll review for the test on uh, Monday, but prior to that, I want you to look at any concepts that are unclear because all I want to do is work problems, quiz problems, homework problems. So when I do the test, I'm going to take them straight from there. You know, like the quiz I just handed back, if you still can't do that problem, which I can look at the grades and about half of you can't, there's going to be one of those on the test. And why not make it easy on yourself and learn how to do the problem so you do well on the test? I'm not going to trick you. Is that like a whole problem or part of problem? It'd be like one problem, 15 points. And then if you can't do it, it takes you a half hour. Man, that test was long instead of five minutes. So, like, approximately about five questions on the test? I don't haven't made it up yet. I'll make it up this weekend. It's on my, I'll put it on my calendar or sometime, whenever I get a chance. Will it on Sunday? No, I don't want to make the test so you know what it is. I want you to learn the material so that when you go in for an interview, if they ask you stuff, you're not lacking confidence. Part of what we do is we, and part of what I do with the quizzes and everything is keep, try to increase your confidence level so you don't go in, I don't know anything. You know, I want you to come in, I learned a lot. What did you learn? This is what I learned, and, you know. I, uh, yeah, I, I only ask because the quizzes with the 15 minutes allotted, right? That's because you don't know it. Yeah, but that's because you can't work the problem. I can do it in five minutes because I know what I'm doing. And it's the same thing over and over. It's VGS, VGS, five, write the loop with the equations in, and ninth grade algebra. Well, I think I know it, but I'm just slow. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, well, well. I don't know what to say, man. No, Do you take course with exams? Is exam Mine's easy. Just tell Dr. Morris that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say that. Uh... <laughs> I don't try to trick you guys. <laughs> I seriously don't. That's why when I get them back and I'm like, what the hell is this? I gave them this quiz already. How can they miss it? Oh, because they're used to not actually learning and then going forward without actually knowing. All right, so now I better shut up and get going here. Let's do three. No, it's not unique to here. All right, so this is example three. I'm going to do one more transient simulation now. I'm going to change this to a sine, and I'm going to change the uh, sine DC offset. So notice... When I do a sign, it doesn't use either the AC or the DC value. The DC is actually grayed out, but the AC would be used if I do an AC sim. When I do a transient, it ignores AC. So if I put AC1 and then I go, hey, well, I had 500 millivolts and it doesn't work, it's ignoring it for a transient. Just like when I do a AC analysis, I ignore the sign. All of these are ignored in an AC analysis. So I go offset, 1.15, amplitude, 1 millivolt, frequency, 1 kilohertz. Hit OK. Let's move it out of the way. Then I hit save. And then I right click here and I say, OK, period <coughs> of 1 kilohertz is 1 millisecond, so I'm going to go 5 milliseconds, so I get 5 periods. Ah, let's only go 3. There's going to be a little startup, but that should be fine. Then I hit OK, and let's see if we get any jagged traces. If we get jagged traces, what do we do? Oh, Dot options, options plot, plot wind size equals 0. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and put that in, just in case you forget. See, this is why I can't remember why they ground the positive in diesel, because I can remember dot options plot <laughs> wind size equals zero. It was either that or the other. Yeah, I picked this one. <laughs> All right, so I hit run. And then I go, okay, I want to see what the AC voltage is here. Oh, it shows me the DC and the AC. That's why transient is used. Then I want to see what the voltage is here. I said it was minus one millivolt. 
Oh, I can't see it. Why? It looks like there's no AC there. Yeah, it's too large. So why don't I double click on there, boom, and I say, hey, it's at 3.85, but it initially goes negative. What does that indicate? means that it's minus one millivolt, because when my source here goes up, if I do this voltage <coughs> minus this voltage, why don't I do that just for the heck of it, okay? So I'm going to add plot plane, and I want to plot the voltage difference between here and here. In other words, I want to see what this source is doing. So I click here. See the five volts? I click here. Can't see anything, so then I go right click on this, and I say minus V of N001, and the only reason I clicked this was so I would know what it was called. So I hit OK, then I get my scissors, and I delete it, and I see that, hey, I'm at 1.15 volts. When I go positive there, this node goes to minus 1. No magic. I know what I'm doing. Questions? Say it's 1.5, and then, it, yeah, 1.01, .01, right there. 1.151, sorry. Is everybody cool with that? Okay, so should I get leave that in there? Let's go ahead and just plot the current. Notice, SPICE isn't going to know what you called ID. SPICE defines current going into a device as positive, and current going out of a device as negative. So if I define ID as positive going down, I want the current going into the device. I'm going to plot right here. And I got that it would be 20 microamps roughly plus 150 nanoamps. I can't tell what the AC component is, and I want to see the AC because I want full credit on my homework because he's been really, really lenient grading the homework. But as the semester progresses, if I don't, and I have been, trust me, if I don't, then I want to make sure that I'm showing it. So then I'm going to say minus 21.63U. How did I get that? I went over here and I said, oh, there we go. And then I go, okay. Hey, it goes to 150 just like I calculated. Do you see what I'm doing? Do you see how it works when I do the calculations and I compare it for the nanometer process it's going to be off more but it's not like and especially I'm getting older and I can't see some of your homeworks so I'm reading that and I'm going what the hell are they writing here it's in like grayed out font and it's like three point I mean I can't even see and they didn't annotate it hint 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 <laughs> I want you to be thoughtful in your sizing of things all right any other questions? I want to do one more example before we move on. Is this useful? Yes. You know, I should have recorded something like, oh, wait, I did do this already. I'm going to do one more simulation now. AC assumes it's small signals. Transient doesn't, so I hit the following. I'm going to make this sine wave not have small signals, which won't show up in an AC small signal. So my source is going to be 1.15 volt offset with a 1 volt peak. So in other words, it'll go up to, well, you tell me, what will it go up to? <coughs> 2.15 and then down to point, minus point 0.815. Does everybody follow that? And I'm going to show that. So I hit OK, and then I hit file save as did I hit save as yet four okay and then I hit run and I look and you know what I'm gonna do I'm lazy I'm going to go plot settings um, open plot settings file then I'm gonna go to the previous plot settings that I used this one whoops right here uh, oh, I can't use the previous plot settings, can I? I'll just do them from scratch. So here, I'm going to see, why don't I just, since I already know it, I want to plot that source. So what am I plotting when I do this? 
yeah, this voltage, right? Okay, there it is. Goes up to, just like I said, oh, okay. Goes up to 2.15 and then down to 0.15. I said minus 0.15, okay? So that's my source. Don't really care about that, but okay. Then I'm going to plot this voltage now. And I see it big going down from swinging around 3.85. Now I'm going to plot the current that flows, and I look, and I say, hey, the current that's flowing shuts off or goes to zero part of the time. Sure, as my gate voltage, which is this node right here, goes towards 5 volts, that shuts the MOSFET off. So when I pull this up towards 5 volts, it shuts the MOSFET off, so sure the current is going to go to zero. I want you to go home and study this and make sure you understand what's going on. Does everybody follow? The only thing I did difference between this one and the previous one, this right here is I changed one millivolt to one volt. This is a small signal, it's a, it's a transient. Okay, so now, what happens if I go back to this one, which was AC, and I change it to 1 volt? Tell me what's going to happen. There's going to be no clipping. That's the whole point. AC assumes that you're smart enough to know that there's small signals. I could put a million volts in there, and it would still just treat everything as... A small signal models. So I hit run, and this is a thousand times bigger, so instead of getting 150 nanoamps, I'm going to get 150 microamps AC. Let's prove it. So I'm looking at my current. Right click, or left click. 150 microamps, thousand times bigger, because it replaces all of the active devices with small signal models. Does everybody get that? So don't say, hey, it works, because you're using small signal models here. Any questions? Is asking you to use SPICE to verify your hand calculations an unreasonable request? I don't think so. It's meant for you to go, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm building confidence. Yay? So let's talk about common source amplifiers. Okay, so the simplest common source amplifier looks like the following. You're going to tell me what the gain is, and we're going to talk about why it's common source. Does everybody have bladder problems these days? <laughs> That's supposed to happen when you get old. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is to the beta multiplier. What do I label this voltage here? V bias N. So there's a gate drain connected device in there. Does everybody see that? <coughs> okay, so looking at this circuit, no tricks. How much DC current flows through there? And why? None. No DC current flows into the gate. Right? So if I ask, there's no current flowing through there, what's the voltage drop across the big resistor? Zero. So then I ask, what's this voltage here? And if I use the sizes that I know, What's the DC current that flows through there? 
Is everybody cool with that? What's the DC voltage there from table 9.1? Gee, I'm boring you. I'm just asking the same things over and over and over. Okay? So if this is 5 volts, what's this voltage? And it's 30 by 2 from table 9.1. Oh, good grief. How many times have I asked that just today? <laughs> okay. Is everybody cool with that? Now, I need to inject an AC signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an AC source and I'm going to inject it in here. If I have a big capacitor here, what is the AC voltage there? Yeah, big capacitor means that it doesn't draw up any voltage. It just feeds the AC through. If I have a big resistor here, how much AC current flows through there? So I'm going to redraw the AC schematic. What is this AC voltage? So then I redraw the schematic to look like the following. Let's call this V out. Wait a sec. Vn is equal to Vgs, and if I have a small voltage here, so one millivolt, this device is off. This is the AC circuit. doesn't show the DC biasing, right? If I ask, what is the AC current that flows in there? That's right, GMVN. Looking good? What is the AC current that flows in that device? Same current. But wait, here's VSG of this transistor. What is VSG equal to? We'll see if we can skip a step because we've done this today a couple of times already. What's V source equal to? What's V gate equal to? So what is VSG equal to? Easy, right? But wait, this is GMN, this is GMN. What is the current in terms of GMP here? Okay, whenever I ask, what is the AC drain current? You go GMVGS, and you look for the GMVGS or GMVSG. I do things in very steps, small steps. What is the gate source voltage? What is the gate voltage? What is the AC source to gate? What is the AC drain current in terms of VSG? There it is. So then I can write GMN times VN. This current is equal to this current, which is GMVN is equal to GMP times minus V out, which equals V out over VN equals minus GMP over GMN. Boom! It is, uh, did I do the math wrong? Oh yeah, thank you. GMN over GMP. Which is 1 over GMP divided by 1 over GMN. And I'm going to do this another way. But before I do, because we're going to do this over and over again. These are. Yeah, if they're the same size, then that's approximately one. Yeah. So you might ask, what's the point of that? It's no gain. That's the side of a current mirror. You can use that for a current mirror, and then mirror the current over into a device, and then I have a high output impedance, and I have high gain. Okay, so what's the voltage here? Anybody challenged by that? 
So I've got a current flowing through a resistance. So I'm going to talk about this circuit some more. Any question? You're reading the book, right? You're taking it to the coffee shop. You're setting it up. You got your hat with the little propeller on the top, and you're drinking your coffee with your book, and people are looking, or your bow tie. <laughs> I feel like I start reading your Oh, come on. <laughs> no, you're smooth. Then I wake up, and I'm like, like this. <laughs> so I'm reading the book. Yeah. 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 that bad, huh? <laughs> All right, so let's look at this circuit here for AC. Would everybody be okay and be able to prove that V out is minus VSG? Did I ever go over that? I just went over it, right? And this voltage is AC is what? Zero. Okay, would everybody be okay if I wrote that the current here is ID is GMP times VSG, which is then GMP times V out minus V out? I'm hearing crickets. Okay, ID, GMP, I'm just repeating myself over and over again. Yay? Would everybody be okay if I wrote V out equals minus ID times 1 over GMP? Questions? Okay, what if I had a device? I'm neglecting output resistance here. All it would do is shunt what I'm about to show you, which I'll prove in a moment. What if I put a resistor here of 1 over GMP, and I call this V out, and then I say the current flowing in there is ID, and I ask, what is V out equal to? Yeah, minus ID times 1 over GMP. <coughs> Yay? So when I see a gate drain connected device, it has a resistance of 1 over GM. Right-o? Any questions? All right. So now I go back and I connect my NMOS here. And I say this is VN. And I ask, what's the current flowing in there? Is everybody cool with that? So then I can write, well, ID is equal to, eh, let's use VGS to be different this time, VGS divided by 1 over GMN. Now I'm having phobia about people doing this algebra thing. All right, questions? So if I look, this is VGS. If I look, there's a current that flows out through here. So if I ask, what's the resistance looking up there? Plus minus VGS ID. What is the resistance I see looking up in there? It is VGS over ID, which is what? 1 over GM. Looking good? So I can say for any common source, oh, why is it called a common source? I didn't cover that. Here's my source. There's my input. Here's my source. That's my ground. There's my output. The source is common with the output and the input. Here's my input. Source is common. Here's my output. AC ground. If it was a PMOS, then it would be VDD, which is at AC ground, and we would draw the line up here, and it would be common source. 
The source is common with the input and the output. So here's my input, here's my output. So for any common source amplifier, the gain is always going to be the ratio of the resistance in the drain. Here it's 1 over GMP divided by the resistance in the source, 1 over GMN. And it's minus because it flows backwards through here. And that's exactly what we covered, or we got right here doing it another way. So let's do it again. I don't want you to say I do things once and then move on. He doesn't take time to make sure I follow. Okay. Let's do it a little different. Let's include output resistance of the devices this time. Now I'm going to draw the output resistance external to the device, but we know that's the way it's modeled, right? So this models the device. Oops. Does everybody see how the source of the amplifying device is common with the input and the output? Common source amplifier. Looking good? So if I ask, what's the current that flows in here? Where does that current flow through? <coughs> okay, I want you to think for a moment. That ID flows through here, flows through here, and flows through here. So, it flows through, would everybody be okay? This is at AC ground, right? Aren't these two in parallel then? The water flows down, the water flows down, and then water flows through this. So wouldn't V out be equal to minus ID times R out P in parallel with R out N in parallel with 1 over GMP? Wait, dude, I don't believe that this small signal resistance is 1 over GMP. I know you've done it three times in class already, but show me one more time. Sure, dude. Would everybody agree the voltage from here to here is VSG, just like I'm writing right there? Would everybody agree the current that's flowing through there is ID? Then wouldn't R have to be equal to VSG over ID, which is 1 over GMP? Wait, but you said the resistance, the gain was the resistance in the source, uh, resistance in the drain divided by the resistance in the source. Oh. AV equals minus resistance in the drain. Here's the drain of the circuit is 1 over GMP parallel with R out N parallel with R out P all over the resistance in the source. Well, here's my source. What's the resistance in this source? Well, there's nothing connected over here, so it's zero. So that's the gain. But wait, what do I know about R out compared to 1 over GM? I don't know, man. That's a hard question. Let me look at the table. Let's see. R out's 5 meg. GM is, where's GM? 150 micro, 1 over 150 micro, 6.5K. 6.5K compared to 5 meg. What's the deal? R out's way bigger. Three orders of magnitude. So what is this approximately equal to? 
1 over GMP divided by 1 over GMN. Intu any questions? Intuitively explain why this is negative. I'm so glad you asked. You're not challenging me. If I drive this voltage up, what happens to the current ID flowing down through here? Okay, you need to know this because this is not a math class. We do a lot of math, but I want you to feel what's going on in the circuit. This goes up, turn the water on, more current goes through here, so ID goes up. Does everybody follow that? Okay, there's several ways to look at it this, at this point. That means that it's trying to pull the pressure V out down, so V out will go down. Wait, if the input's going up and the output's going down, oh, the gain is negative. Okay, if I pull more ID through here, it has to flow through this device. In order for this device to supply more ID, this VSG has to go up. Well, the gate, the source, is fixed at 5 volts, so if VSG goes up, it means V gate goes down. Oh, well, that's inconsistent. V out goes down. Everybody follow that. Does it make sense? Okay, so let me do one more example, then we'll do our grade booster. What do you guys think about the quiz? Quizzes. Hate them. <laughs> they put in, what is some of the, I haven't seen my teaching comments in a while for some reason, uh, but it used to be the students would say, Going to his class was incredibly stressful. The quizzes made the class infinitely more stressful. It was like having a job interview every day. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so let's do this one. Where does this V bias P come from? Yeah, from the beta multiplier. The problem is you have to, part of being successful is failing. So you have to be okay with failing and not let it ruin you. No, I can't fail. Just like how many years did I not use, did I use headphones when I could have been just using this? <laughs> Failure! <laughs> Serious. If this is good enough, why did I torture myself? Anyway, all right, so let's write the AC voltages. What's the AC voltage there? So what is the source to gate voltage equal to? I know that's the fourth time we went over that today. Okay. I'm not going to worry about the R outs in this one. We could have them just like we did before. If I write this voltage, what is this voltage? And so what is this current? Well, let's go GMV out. And then what is this current? which is the same. So I can write GM times minus V in equals GM times V out. Let's make sure we're clear here. And then I can write V out over V in equals minus 1 over GM in divided by 1 over GMP, which is equal to minus GMP over GM N. And I look and I say, well, here's the drain part of the circuit. Here's the source. Looking into the source, I see a resistance of 1 over GMP. Looking into the drain, I see R out N in parallel with R out P in parallel with 1 over GM N. And these are equal. Did I do this one wrong again? 
No, oh, this is right. V out is G M N G M. Oh, 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 yeah. So this would be V P. Sorry. Too many typos on my PowerPoint notes, huh? <laughs> Good, bad? What do you think? Don't know what the hell's going on in this class. He's shoving the material in my head. Stop it. I'm getting too much for my money. All right, so you're going to read chapter 21. So if I put a problem like this on the midterm, you'll be able to do it. 21. Amplifiers, at least the first few sections. You need to read the book. The book's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's take our quiz.